Olympics. Hello, I'm Cheryl Chamberlain, Vice President of Capgemini, and I am a CUBE alumni. Live from Santa Clara, California, extracting the signal from the noise, it's the CUBE, covering NextWork 2015. Brought to you by Juniper Networks. Now your host, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Santa Clara in the shadows of Levi Stadium at the Santa Clara Marriott for a special CUBE presentation of Juniper's next work. It's a customer summit, their first summit. This is the CUBE. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise and proud to be here with my co-host Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com as the analyst for infrastructure, networks, cloud, enterprise. And our next guest is Jide Akintola. Akin Akintola, Tola, yes. Akintola um, who's a Juniper ambassador, but he's with TMX Atrium, head of network engineering design. Welcome to theCUBE, really appreciate that. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, John. Um, so you're, you are on the cutting edge of real time. That is Talk correct. Talk a little bit about what you guys do at TMX and how that fits into, into real time trading information. Certainly data in motion is happening in your world. Share what you work on and the company and specifically your job. Okay, fantastic. Thanks a lot, Ying John. Uh, <coughs> um, I'm Judy Akintola, Head of Engineering, Tim, etc. Um, <coughs> we actually a subsidiary of uh, Toronto Stock Exchange, and uh, we provide low latency connectivity for customers uh, across the globe to most of the major stock exchanges, uh, NYSE, NASDAQ, CME, London Stock Exchange, and <coughs> the uh, effectively we 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 a transport provider, uh, meaning um, uh, just providing that connectivity uh, for customers, you know, from their co-location or offices to the stock exchange, and making sure that uh, the market data we back all in back to the customer are delivered on time. And when I say on time, we're talking about micro nanoseconds, as well as delivered, you know, intact, reliably, uh, without any uh, packet loss or uh, effectively. Are these direct connections? So colo to exchange, or are they all direct connections? Yep, so, so it, the, we, we've got direct connectivity uh, mm -hmm. as an extranet provider to the exchange. So uh, I have a direct connectivity to uh, NASDAQ, for instance, or NYSE stock exchange and customer looking to mm -hmm. get those uh, market data uh, connect to me. Uh, it could be at the same location or it could be uh, elsewhere. I've got a backbone that span mm -hmm. the entire uh, uh, North America and uh, Europe. Uh, so It's like we live in an era of so much change and you know, I'm, I'm old enough to now tell my kids, I remember when before, before there was cell phones and then there were pagers. I remember when there was 15 minute delays on stock quotes, which you know, back seems like you know, decades ago, but that was only like 10 years ago. It's real time now. So I want you to talk more about that nanosecond. Really, that's a, that is the threshold of pain that you have. Talk about that latency challenge. What is the exact number again? And what is, what's been the progression <laughs> uh, <laughs> of, of a second, half a second, and then take us through. So what's the number today? And kind of uh, how fast has it shifted? Uh, Trading information is arbitraging all over the place. Exactly. So people are uh, concerned. Uh, you know, we, we, we started from seconds to milli. Now we're talking nanoseconds. Uh, we do actually have uh, uh, a, an ultra low latency microwave infrastructure company, actually, uh, called Strike Technologies, uh, which is also a subsidiary of Toronto Stock Exchange. And uh, so. It's all about giving customer choices now. So uh, depending on you know, what latency you're looking for, uh, we can give it to you. you, know, you if you want the ultra low latency in milliseconds, nanoseconds, effectively nanoseconds range, we've got the microwave options. And if you're looking at the uh, micro, between micro and milli, we've got the fiber options. So it depends on you know, which, uh, 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 you know, what the customers are looking for, and it's all about giving customer choices at the, at the end of the day. 
So, Gita, can you talk a little bit about how you got involved in the Juniper Ambassador Program? Uh, you know, it, it, I love coming to events like this because you've got, you know, people that are building stuff and they're really excited. I mean, I, I was checking out your Twitter stream and, you know, there's people, you know, the, the new MX chips have got me super excited. They're hashtagging, I love Trio. Um, so, you know, what, you know, you've got your day job and you've got your things you have to do, but, you know, you're stepping up, you know, doing the ambassador program, you know, the, what, what led you down this path and, and how do you benefit from it? Okay, fantastic. Thanks a lot, Stu. Uh, <coughs> being an ambassador is actually, uh, to me personally, I think it's a privilege uh, uh, and an opportunity to work with uh, people of like-minded uh, that are actually passionate and committed to helping uh, one another and the you know general public as a as a whole. Um, I used to work for Juniper uh, Networks. I did five years with Juniper Networks, and um, uh, and and the ambassador thing is something I've always you know uh, look at as uh, you know, and I put it in a high esteem, and uh, to actually be you know head oriented and nomi and you know been brought in into the ambassador uh, family uh, like I said it's 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 a massive honor and privilege uh, uh, and um, so uh, eff effectively it's 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 a family it's a community and you know uh, like-minded people you know that are passionate about helping people you know solve challenges and problems you know uh, that's pretty much what we do, and, uh, and I, can, I can't thank uh, Juniper enough yeah. you know, for giving so, me the so, opportunity. So you've sat on both sides of the table when that it, is correct. it comes to Juniper. Can you talk a little bit about kind of the, the, the back and forth you have? You know, you have your customers. I mean, it, it, there's very few industries where, where you're like, you know, the smallest measurement can, you know, translate into significant dollars. I mean, you that know, is we correct. always say, you know, oil and gas and the, the, the trading, high, high frequency trading is, you know, that microseconds or nanoseconds, you know, we can translate that into you know millions or more of dollars. So you know, wh what kind of dialogue do you have? How's Juniper listening? Uh, obviously, you've got a little bit of background there, but uh, give us a little bit of insight as to what it's like to be uh, a Juniper customer and, and ambassador. You know, uh, the are, are, are they listening? You know, yeah. uh, thank you. Uh, uh, <coughs> so it, it is actually fascinating because uh, being on the inside and not on the outside, I'm able to provide an unbiased feedback to Juniper and the ambassador uh, platform, you know, gives, you know, gives you that platform effectively to be able to provide those feedback and uh, I get, Juniper does listen, you know, uh, it, it's a, it, it's a two way thing, you know, uh, you know uh, the dialogue is two way between uh, myself, you know, on the outside, you know, you can you effectively, I'm not bound by uh, uh, internal bureaucracies, I could effectively provide an unbiased uh, uh, feedback to Juniper, and, and that's effectively what I'm doing. Jide, share with us um, a day in the life of your world and how that's changed over the years. En network engineering, I mean, those guys were the, the elite back in the old days. They ran the networks. We heard, you know, Jonathan from Juniper say, Wi-Fi is the number one thing on people's Maslow's hierarchy of needs these days. Certainly the network is critical. And it's always been the elite people. But now you've seen the roles change. It's a lot more DevOps, you got critical infrastructure, you have real-time trading in your case. What is your, what is your day to day? Give us a share, some of the cutting edge things that you're working on. You don't have to be reveal any confidential information, but like, what are some of the things that, that are really core to your job right now? Uh, core to my job, I would say, if I've got to pick, it's got to be automation. Um, <clears throat> automation in the sense that, you know, um, within the industry, uh, you know, we work in, you know, uh, sometimes it could take, you know, weeks or months to deliver a service to, to customer and those customer you know looking to trade any days without a service you know that waiting is actually costing them a lot of money so being able to you know automate is that the provisioning the deployment exactly, the execution exactly oh. you know uh, from a single plane you know it's crucial and critical to to, to what I do so uh, 
my focus is on predominantly automation, automation of service delivery, automation of provisioning, automation of end-to-end, -end, you know. Uh, so what do you think about the new 5200 switches that they announced? Um, did you get a peek at them early? Um, just the first look at them? What's your take on the 5200s? <laughs> I, I, I believe it's, 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 it's an amazing product. Uh, the the Juno's you know, deaggregation, which I'm actually you know, really passionate and fascinated with, it's, uh, I, th I think it's a game changer. If, if you look back you know, uh, uh, to 1996 when Juniper started with the uh, separation of forwarding and control plane, and fast track that to you know eight ten years uh, when other competitors started doing the same thing, and now we're talking about Juno's uh, deaggregation. You know, it's it's Juniper is always at the forefront of technology. They, they make bold moves. They exactly. They, they do, don't they? And and uh, it's 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 one of the reason I you know uh, you know. I love Juniper, and I'm passionate about Juniper's yeah. products. Uh, so the products... Uh, the disaggregation of Juno's is like bringing candy into the, to the kids on Halloween. It's like, ah, exactly. I get, I get and to play. Do whatever you, know. you want to do with it. You know? yeah. it's, it's, it's giving people you know, the opportunity to you know, take it to the next yeah. level effectively. Yeah, I've always loved Juno. I think they were holding that back. I mean, not because they weren't ready. I think SDN kind of just dropped and kind of hyped up the market, I mean, I mean, Stu, how long ago was Nasira's funding? I mean, then they got sold to VMware. The SDN really sucked the oxygen out of the room, um, and Junos is now being disaggregated. How do you reconcile as a network engineer the SDN trend and the Junos thing? I, 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 I think it's actually complementary. Um, uh, SDN, at the, at the end of the day, uh, it is the way forward, actually. Yeah, so there's no two way about it. SDN is the way forward. Uh, an ability to be able to orchestrate your network, you know, uh, uh, you know, at a Eagles, I view, it's crucial uh, to me anyway. Uh, so you, you can effectively, uh, you know, map out an end-to-end -end, uh, 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 path across, you know, with uh, uh, Juniper's uh, North Star product, for instance, mm -hmm. it, it is, it is an amazing product set for uh, an extra net provider to, or just any company, as, as a matter of fact, to actually have, uh, because you know it allows you to orchestrate your network effectively. Uh, reconciling SDN and uh, the uh, was it uh, the Junos, Junos disaggregation. Uh, uh, disaggregation. Effectively, what that gives you is. Uh, you know, with the, the, uh, dis the disaggregation of Junos, you know, it, it gives myself or my DevOps or, you know, uh, an opportunity to actually, you know, like you said, it's like giving a candy to, to, to a child on a way night, you know, to yeah. do whatever they want to do with, you know. Yeah. It energizes the exactly, developers. Exactly, yeah. And the, the network developers are like more engaged. Um, I got to ask you a final question on um, the event here. For the folks that are not here, you're an ambassador, used to sharing uh, data and insight. To share folks watching that aren't here at the Juniper Customer Summit 2015. What's it like here? What's going on here? What are they sharing? Give it, give us some some color to the event here. Uh, the event has been amazing. It's uh, you know being able to bring. You know, everybody under the same roof, you know, it's, it's incredible, you know. Uh, the keynote from Rami was spot on, you know, very encompassing, you know. Uh, uh, Jonathan, you know, he did an amazing uh, speech as well. So uh, for, for people watch, watching, uh, I believe it's, 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 uh, uh, it's, it's been an amazing experience Great for me. Great networking uh, too. Exactly. The you know, access. Exactly. The executives. Exactly. Jide, thanks so much for sharing your insight and data here on theCUBE. Data is always in motion with theCUBE. We are, we are network, we're pushing it out as fast as we can. Uh, wire speed, social speed, we've got the Cube Gems. Go to Twitter and search hashtag Cube Gems. It's our new product, you can see all the highlights. Jiday's highlight will be on the network right now before he even comes off theCUBE. We are siliconangle.tv, check out crowdchat.net slash NXT work, join the conversation. We'll be right back with more after this short break. Yeah, thanks John, thanks Steve.